It was a scary story. An Air National Guard unit had to be rescued after their boat flipped over. And once they're safe on shore, the finger pointing begins. The boat manufacturer is blamed and forced out of business. But our investigation calls into question the qualifications of the crew and the dangerous location they selected for this training mission. Quinn Local 6 reporter Casey Montoya has the story belly up. May 29th, 2009, approximately 9.30 a.m. Coast Guard, Coast Guard, Mayday, Mayday. Six members of the Oregon Air National Guard's 125th Special Tactics Squadron rescued by the United States Coast Guard after their boat capsized near the Columbia River Bar, an area known as the Graveyard of the Pacific. Coast Guard, Coast Guard, Mayday, Mayday. According to the Air National Guard, the men were on a training mission on a 2007 31-foot SAV-3 made by USIA in Tillamook, Oregon, a vessel popular with many government agencies. Price tag? More than 199,000 taxpayer dollars. They were looking for dive sites. The Air National Guard safety investigation placed blame on the boat's design, but Avid Ocean Mariners and the boat's makers say not so fast. I think they were just out there for a recreational drive. I think they were going to have some fun, and they lost control of the boat in the sea state. Retired Chief Petty Officer Stephen Bronson says the boat was likely not the reason the SAV-3 flipped. Bronson thinks the driver's lack of experience was key to the crash. Lack of training, lack of proper preparation, lack of understanding of the conditions that they were putting themselves into. He says it's obvious the guardsmen were not following even basic procedures. They were not even wearing life jackets. The boat left Portland the morning of May 29th at 6.15 a.m., headed down the Columbia River toward the Pacific. According to the National Weather Service, the water was cold. The strongest current of the day was expected around the exact time the guardsmen headed into the bar. Once we lost our steerage way and, you know, we lost power to the, to the outboards, the, it was such a passive rollover. Greg Hutchison was hired by the National Guard in 2008. He has an Oregon boater's card, but no formal training with the U.S. Coast Guard. The National Guard supports him. A uh, very qualified individual to be driving that boat. Okay. Uh, we wouldn't send these guys out unless there was qualified individuals to go. But can the Guard defend the location of the training mission? The Columbia River Bar is rated by Lloyds of London as the single most hazardous bar crossing on Earth. The guardsmen on board that day told government safety investigators the sea was fairly calm with waves just two to four feet, not according to an eyewitness. I wouldn't have crossed it. Herman Rudisil has more than 40 years of experience fishing the waters of the Pacific. And then when we were coming across the bar that morning, the buoys were laid over 30 degrees. The six men rescued by the Coast Guard May 29th were not injured. The same can't be said for the boat's maker. Kim Johns owns USIA, a government contractor based in St. Helens, Oregon. He's been making special action vessels for more than 15 years. Johns was forced to close the door of the Tillamook plant that made the boat after that safety report placed blame on his design. And after this May 29th accident, no phone calls, no inquiries, no anything, just like the faucet shut off. A dozen local jobs lost, a thriving Oregon business gone. The end of the dynasty. Me and my friend Wayman, who worked with us, and yeah, we both lost our jobs. If the boat's design was at fault, why didn't investigators ever question the maker of the boat? And why didn't the guard try to recoup the $200,000 loss? The Air National Guard didn't think it had a warranty. But on a taxpayer purchase that big, how could they not know? Our investigation shows the Air National Guard took the boat in several times for minor warranty repairs before May 29th. After the accident, the SAV-3 was left in the Pacific Ocean for days. Neither the Coast Guard nor the Oregon Air National Guard went back immediately to recover it. The Guard says it was lost at sea. Kim John says the Guard could have gotten a new boat out of the deal. Instead, John says he was called by a sergeant from the 125th who wanted a low-profile investigation. According to cell phone records, Sergeant Adam Monticelli called Kim Johns twice, less than two hours after the incident. 
there was a second call and that's when we had the discussion about the boat flipped the commander wants to keep this government to government coin local six reported on sergeant monticelli's alleged misconduct earlier this year he's accused of stealing government property including atvs and electronics then selling them on craigslist when we went to ask monticelli about the incident he didn't have much to say so was it a perfect storm of inexperience or a less than perfect boat? We may never know. The Air National Guard turned the boat into scrap metal and sold the hull and engines for less than $1,000. Why would they not contact you or you as part of an investigation before they close it and destroy the boat? Boat's under warranty. They could have came to me and said, we want our money back. Casey Montoya, Coin Local 6. Well, tonight on CoinLocal6.com, click on WebExers to read all the documents relating to the investigation. Another point, the Air National Guard provided the documents in interviews, but just last week they told us this is now a legal matter and they cannot answer any more questions.